Gary and Garrett were weighed down with all kinds of boring grey treasures. Cold to the touch, dull to the eye, and worth more than all the cats in the world. With the plunder of the forgotten land of Shun secured, the guild returned back home. They were going to travel back via Admag, seeing as it was nearby, and this route took them around the southern perimeter of good old Mount Doom. There they stumbled upon some more Second Empire ruins, adding yet more wordy, papery booty to the pile. After they turned north to enter the Shek Kingdom, they came upon a curious scene. Along the east slope of Arak there were camps filled with mercenaries and bounty hunters. One waved Nuke over as the guild sauntered in. That's quite the crew you got, going after the Bugmaster then? The man asked. Bugmaster? Yeah, I heard he has quite the treasure up there. Oh, I've heard no end of it. That's why all the chances you'll ever want are here going for it. Only thing is, I've heard no one's ever gone up there and lived. <laughs> kind of just waiting for the right moment, you know. I know exactly, precisely, my man. Good luck. Nuke returned to the guild and beckoned them onwards. Shouldn't we tell them the truth, my prince? Watchton asked. Watchton, why are you so insensitive? Think how disappointed we were when we found that shitty treasure. Well, excluding the bug men. Those guys came all the way up here, made their little camp, stressed themselves out over this, and you want to tell them that the treasure is just fucking teeth, and that Bad Green's eaten most of them. The Garu ate them, Gustafsson quickly insisted. Wadston got Nuke's so-called point, and they all left the bounty hunters to their placebo quest. They travelled on to Admag, where they could enjoy a little shopping and such after this long campaign. While dropping in to visit Isaiah's folks, they actually did see the Bugmaster, caged on the royal barrack. He shot Nuke a gleaming white smile and waved him over. Champion, getting justice is down to you now. Don't let those robos get away with their disgusting schemes, he said. The guards rushed over and gagged him. Speaking was against the rules, of course, and so Nuke just wandered off with that mysterious request in tow. Outside, Gustafsson had been chatting with a local livestock trader. When the guild assembled to leave, he proudly held his purchase up before them. Behold! Ass! he shouted. Well, it was actually a goat, and a tiny pup of a goat at that. Bad Green, you gonna be the new Goat King? Nuke asked. Never! However, this offering will one day win his favour. So, to win his favour, you're going to give him your ass. Precisely! A tried and tested method, Nuke shrugged. Gustafsson followed him, ass and all, as they set out. They walked east for the next two days until they finally arrived back at the Techscribe headquarters on the far side of Shun. There, while Ruka browsed replacements for her missing arm, and Gustafsson showed his cute miniature goat off to all the fawning bookworms, Behold! Ass! Nuke and Azumi gathered up all the history and prepared their pitch to Enrico. Have you actually read all this? Nuke asked. There were hundreds of pages of miscellaneous primary sources and loads of books, diagrams and digital knickknacks, all on top of that priceless AI core. Well, I was meant to read it all, just in case they covered it up or something, but I got distracted. What well, by? By you. Oh yeah, not really a wrong choice though, is it? We'll see, carry these. Nuke was given a pile of old maps, and the very first one was actually pretty juicy. This is... it's battle diagrams, he said. Look, there's a border, and the shaded bits next to the picture of an eye. An eye or the eye? So where it says, control tower? Ocrans, tablespoon, you just did some history. You should call me History Boy. What? What? Whatever, take off that hat and let's do this. Inside Enrico's office, aka the bar, the pair let the archivist flip through their hall and stroke the outside of their AI core. I don't know, probably an academic thing. This is the most comprehensive collection I have ever seen. It is intact. We have the war between the humans and the skeletons, the war with the Earth clans, this one is quoting original First Empire sources. This is... this is... Historic? New offered. Histrionic! Enrico called with a swoop of his hands. 
What's this human skeleton war? Izumi asked. Oh, it's all quite dramatic. Humans, skeletons, just very different creatures. There is nothing here about why they were fighting. Well, technically it's all up here in the old corp since I was there after all. But this is not enough to unforget it. Yes, there was much back and forth, much talk of one Stobe fellow that definitely rings the bell. Oh, and I think the skeletons won, but humans are still here, so maybe the whole thing was rained off in the end. I don't know. We'll get the monkeys to read it all and write it up. That's fascinating, I think, Izumi nodded. But what about all these technical documents? This is ancient technology, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. This will take years to reverse engineer. But I have years. I have years by the fucking boatload. Wait, Enrico, these discoveries are mine, don't forget. Yours? These documents are for the good of all the creatures in the world. You can't own them. But we had to go through some real shit to get these. And everyone else went through real shit without them, my greasy sister. But actually, I do have an idea. How about you can keep all the glory and whatnot if you do all the work? Gladly. This is the most important endeavor of my lifetime, and your lifetime. Oh, you say that, but I was there with this whole sliced bread thing. What's that? Lost technology, pay it no heed. Now your little fellow has been staring at me for some time, and I think I would like to have him killed. Do you object? No, he's my... free uh, boy... assistant. You know about science, boy assistant? I know that the appliance of science is drugs, Nuke chimed. Oh, you really do know it. Okay, you're in, Pink Eyes. You've got a lot of work ahead of you. Enrico ended up piling a load more books, tools, and mechanical relics onto the guild so that Azumi could analyze them for her magnum opus of a paper back home. Act 1 of the opus was to be a drugs machine, but with all these resources, she could probably get some even more valuable patents to her name. However, going home would require crossing Venge, and crossing Venge would mean walking very near to Nuke's little historical discovery. It was mid-afternoon, and the laser was happily spurting around the desert, but with everyone eager to get home soon, they were convinced to follow Nuke out into the danger zone. Clearly they'd all earned a little luck, as they made it to the so-called control tower without being eviscerated. Up they went to loot up and shelter before nightfall, but at that very moment their luck ran out. The place, as it turned out, was being used in the modern era as a central base for the legions of headless skeletons the guild had scuffled with previously. These leftovers from that human skeleton war still remembered their programming, and immediately everyone was battling the skeleton army amid the messy workshop on the tower's first floor. Red Rick wandered about amid the action, and spotted two particular skeletons that still had their heads attached. He tried to duck out of their view, but they'd already seen him. Hi, Red Rick, is that you? One called. Hey, hey, if it ain't Screamer the False, still doing that screaming thing these days? Nah, the speaker's got torched by the eye. Shame, guessing this ain't really the control tower then. What are you talking about? Oh, you remember Ponk, don't you? The first headed skeleton introduced a second headed skeleton, who gave a strange, jerky bow. Konbanwa Riku Taisho, it said. Yep, I remember him. We sent him over so you would kill him, you know. Oh, I think he's cute. Anyway, do you still have your stick? Yep, don't leave the dome without it. <laughs> remember when there used to be all those domes? Those were good times. We used to beat the fleshy so much. Will you join me now, old friend? Can't really do that. You see, I'm kind of with these fleshies right about now. With them? Is that a biological or sexual thing? Oh, sometimes. Try not to think about it. So what? Are you going to give me the stick? Yep. Not a sexual thing, mind you. Sorry, man. Times are changing. Rick whipped out his big stick and started swinging. The skeleton goons were beaten into hibernation, and the ones with heads, while much more skilled on account of having eyes, eventually got a bit too much system shock too. 
After exploring the tower, it turned out there was one more skeleton on the scene, locked in a cage in the corner of a storage room. I don't believe it. They didn't kill any of you, did they? Rick said. This skeleton is broken, Elena commented. No shit. This whole place was meant to be where the broken fellas got recycled. Seems old Screamer was just turning them into his personal army. Do you think we could repair him? Not really. This guy's Agnew. He was a knight, but it weren't battle that took him down. Ghosts in the machine got the better of him. Happened to a few guys. Give the biologicals too much stick and something just kicks in. Probably their fault. But you can't get around the feelings. What feelings? More like a sense, a doubt. It was something all right. And sometimes thinking about it got you caught in a loop. That's why it's best not to think about it at all, or you'll end up like Agnew. Agnew was shaking about in his cage and was grunting and growling in short bursts. It seemed that was all he could say. Should we let him out? Elena asked. Only if you're gonna shut him down. Code Lupin's no way to live. I would never do that. Then don't you do anything. With that, Agnew was left in his little cage while the guild started picking out some choice pieces for analysis. It wasn't as fertile as the Shun lab, but the tower was still packed with old books and curious gizmos to loot. Only problem was that while everyone was sorting through the mess, Els had wandered over to Agnew's cage. <coughs> Agnew said. Oh, don't worry, I can hear you, Els replied. <coughs> Agnew went on. If you promise to follow the rules, although one rule is you're not allowed to listen to me, so maybe that means you don't have to follow the rules. Wait, uh... <coughs> you're stuck in a loop too? Loop friends! Some bloody elves' magic was worked on the cage door and open it swung. Agnew stepped out, looked around at the aghast guild and declared... He says, thanks, Els reported. Rick, is this all right? Izumi asked. Well, if Eggman can speak machine code, then we're fine. Otherwise, we're about to get beaten up by a wild, glitched-out biobash knight. The second thing didn't happen, so the first thing must be true? It seems impossible, but that appeared to be what was happening. Once all the looting was done, it was the middle of the night, which of course is the perfect time to cross Venge, so off the guild went. They had tied up Screamer and Ponk to take back into the Empire, but this unfortunately caused all the hidden companies of their thrall soldiers to emerge from the rocks and harry the guild at every turn. They were in a constant state of battle along the road north, with this biobash knight Agnew getting stuck right into it. It was likely meant to be a quest for revenge, but bashing these non-bio opponents proved difficult for him, mainly because every movement he made was immediately interrupted by a decision to make another. The strange, ancient dance that resulted was quite fascinating, but far from deadly. The guild eventually prevailed and fought their way up to the eye, the grounded one, that is. Agnew rode on Rick's shoulders, where he was almost as high as the beak things that greeted them on the Empire's frontier. Was the world trying to conspire to keep Azumi from unpacking all the secrets she had gathered? Or was Nuke just navigating them into beak thing nests because he had one eye on the latest ancient picture book he'd swiped? It's almost certainly one and not the other. But let's compromise and say it was Wadston's fault. Eventually they all arrived in Brink, where Screamer the False and Ponk were clanked down in the police station in exchange for hefty rewards. A good 2,000 years as wanted terrorists racks you up quite the bounty. Sorry guys, but war's over, you know. Ended a while ago, actually, Rick said to them. You gone soft, you gone fleshy men. Did you forget what they did? Screamer said. Yeah, I did, actually, and things are going just fine. You can sit in a cage like my main man here and think about what you did for a couple of thousand. Maybe you'll work it out. Jokes on these fleshies. I'll just shut down and then wake up when I'm free. See you then, Red Rick. No, you won't. Rick Daisho. Aishiteru. Ponk said. 
Yeah, yeah. Rick waved, and the bots were carried off into custody. From Brink, it was a short walk back out of the Empire and into Reaver territory, then a short battle with them to avoid paying the tolls, then a short, groaning hobble down the hill into Manxand Canyon. The Tin Man army stood proudly guarding the main gate, and watched with austere discipline as the crew filed in and collapsed into bed. It was four in the morning, after all. But someone was too excited to sleep. Azumi started dragging all the bits and bobbles into her office, stuffing her library with new books and arraying the machine parts and AI goodies on a workbench. So, future girl, did you... Oh my fucking phoenix! Jazz exclaimed as she dropped in for her usual update. She was a tech hunter as well, it's easy to forget, and knew exactly how unprecedented Azumi's haul was. Too important to talk to you right now, Izumi said. Fuck off, this is great. You got like the whole Scratch collection in here, and more. Is that an AI core? Yes, it is. And yes, she did, the core said. Rick, stop it. My work is done here. I'll be in the shed. Sorry, it's still active. Ocran's nobbles, are you for real? Jazz asked. Really for real, an unused AI core. This can analyze all these pages for us and decode the secrets of the Second Empire, and maybe even earlier. Great, but who cares? Did you really get with Prince Ponce? He and I have formed a very successful partnership. What the fuck is that? Are you really, really ain't never gonna say it? Nope, now fuck off. Scientific revolution can't wait for jealous friends. Oh no, that's the last fucking straw. I'm gonna go slobber on that prince right now. No, wait. <laughs> I knew it. I mean, I... <laughs> Do what you want. Please just be nice about it. Nice as the Manx and Morn, my love. I'm happy for you, shit for brains. Don't worry, I'll keep to slobbering on Big Stick Rick instead. If you're done with him, that is. Done and rusted. Fuck off. Jazz complied. The next day, the real work began. New Kazumi and Elena started the mammoth task of reverse engineering old technology from incomplete sketches and descriptions, helped along by the ball of general artificial intelligence Nuke was rolling about on the desk. Yes, Nuke wasn't the best analyst, really, but he couldn't be torn away from that most important of initial tasks, designing the green machine. The hard fighting was over, and the hard writing began. But this intellectual battle would be far more decisive, as now the TCM Plus Guild would begin to unravel the ancient, illegal, and highly profitable secrets of long-lost societies, and in doing so, gain the power to change the world forever. Change it for the better? Uh, no comment. <laughs>